Hey guys, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. We're seeing an unwind, a huge unwind in the cryptocurrency trade. Things like Bitcoin have gone from the low 60,000s to the low 30,000s in just a couple of weeks. And the movement, especially in the last 24 hours, has been severe to the downside. Now, while a bubble uh, is pretty obvious in the rear view mirror, we've certainly seen a lot of signs of trend exhaustion as Bitcoin has gone higher. Today, we're going to focus particularly on Fibonacci retracements, how they can help you make sense of a market that's gone through a quick decline and where to identify some lines in the sand in the interim as uh, something like Bitcoin bounces around. So today we will talk about how to apply Fibonacci retracements to Bitcoin. So the rise in cryptocurrencies has been fascinating to watch, and we've certainly seen signs along the way of the meteoric rise of things like Bitcoin from, you know, below 10,000 all of a sudden to the, uh, you know, 60,000s in, uh, in a year or so, and then coming down and now having getting down to the 30,000 level in the last 24 hours. Uh, the rise of uh, cryptocurrencies, the more widespread adoption of them has been very classic relative to other bubbles. And the way that this is now resolving in the last month or so is also very much expected. The timing of it is what can be a challenge. Uh, I was often taught, taught early in my career, the left side of a bubble provides plenty of opportunities to make money if you can play it right. Before we get to the chart and talk about how to use Fibonacci retracements in this particular circumstance, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. If you like this sort of thinking about investor behavior and decision making and understanding the markets through technical analysis, hit subscribe. We would very much appreciate it. Also, give the video a like if you could. We would appreciate that as well. Finally, uh, put a comment below the video. Tell me what you think of Bitcoin. Do you think we've seen a floor around 30,000? Do you think we're returning back to 64, 65,000? Do you think uh, the long-term trend will be somewhere in the middle? We're going to fill out this range. Tell me which of those three you think is most likely. Let's get to the chart. All right, so this is the chart of Bitcoin we're going to use. And first off, I will apologize because this is a really busy chart. If you followed my work or if you follow my YouTube channel, you know my charts tend to be pretty lean and clean. I like to go for simplicity. We're talking about Fibonacci retracements and particularly what we're gonna do through this video is build this chart from scratch. And I will show you how you can uh, use Fibonacci retracements to put moves into proper context and understand the dynamics of how something has evolved uh, over time. So during the course of the video, we're gonna get here, uh, but to start off, uh, I will use this chart to, to share with you uh, a couple observations. You know, number one, I would say that while Bitcoin is, you know, is new and the idea of cryptocurrencies and digital assets and all of that is transformative and very, very new, what is totally not new is human behavior and the euphoria that we've seen on the rise in something like Bitcoin and the sudden downturn that we've seen is completely unsurprising. We've seen that so many times to play out over and over with previous bubble phases. So while the exact circumstances of how things have unwound so far are, are unique and, and are always a little bit different, they rhyme so beautifully with so many other experiences that I've had and that you will most likely have as an investor as your, as your career goes on. So I'm, I'm super not surprised that things have played out like this. Uh, one of my mentors, Ralph Acampora, always loved to talk about how markets go up the escalator and down the elevator. And this chart of Bitcoin is an exact representation of that, of the long-term uptrend that you see in Bitcoin, but then the sudden downturn. That's that's how things tend to, have, uh, tend to happen. So the thing I would refer to here is just to, to know what we're going to be doing is, is using Fibonacci retracements to put things into proper context. And we're going to be building it by looking at key support and resistance levels. So the way that this generally works is you start with support and resistance. What are the key levels to pay attention to? What are the meaningful turning points on this chart? Then you use Fibonacci retracements to try to put the moves into context and tr then try to understand where you might be looking for support and resistance uh, going forward. So <clears throat> actually, let's start with a completely blank chart. So let's go over here. All right. Relatively blank chart. We have some moving averages on here. Actually, we're going to get rid of the moving average to make it even cleaner. There we go. All right. So here's our chart of Bitcoin. And we're going back to March of 2020. March of 2020 was, you know, the low for stocks and low for many assets, including Bitcoin. This is where it bottomed out uh, around 3000 or so before rallying. Uh, so as you're looking at this chart, what are the key levels to pay attention to? So 
First off, we have the March 2020 low. That was the bottom in Bitcoin, right, over time. Next key level would be 10,000, right? And if you look, there's this sort of pivot, what we call a pivot point, which is a level where you find both support and resistance. As uh, Bitcoin rallied higher, it, it resistance around 10,000 there in May and June of uh, 2020, pulled back a couple times and then finally broke through in July. Then retested the same 10,000 level from above and that rotation higher when it got about above 12,500, uh, you know, had that pivot point and then rotated above the highs. That for me was a real clear signal that there were much higher moves uh, in, in store for, uh, for Bitcoin. You can see how the trend uh, has gone higher, accelerated to the upside from there. The next major high I would argue was in January of 2021. This is when you had a pretty steep pullback. It peaked around 42,000, pulled back to around 30,000, then rotated in the next major high would be the all-time high there in April. So those are sort of the key levels, the March low, the 10,000 level, and the pullback in September of last year, the January 2021 high and subsequent pullback, and then the rally that you see into the highs in, uh, in April. It's worth noting, by the way, all along this period here in 2021, you can see how you have what's called a bearish divergence with RSI. Every time in 2021, in January, February, March, April, every time Bitcoin has gone higher, the RSI has made lower peaks, right? So there's less and less momentum behind each of those pushes higher. It's what we call a bearish momentum divergence. Now, the issue with that is every time you had a divergence, you kept going higher. And that's sort of, you know, what, what does that really help? What's really interesting is the first time that Bitcoin made a new all-time high, but the RSI did not become overbought. It's kind of a really classic tell that things are getting uh, sort of exhausted. It happened recently with the S&P 500, where uh, in April to May, you have new highs in, uh, in uh, stocks, but lower peaks in RSI, and the secondary peak was not overbought. Uh, we, we recorded some other videos, by the way, about RSI divergences. So if that discussion about momentum divergences doesn't make sense, we've recorded videos on this channel about semiconductors, uh, interest rates, uh, stocks, all uh, with that bearish divergence and what that means. So check out some of the other videos if that didn't make sense. So that was the situation on Bitcoin leading up to its peak. What was the real tell that the trend in Bitcoin was uh, was changing were a couple of things. The bearish divergence was number one. The lower peak that you had when it failed at 60,000 a couple of weeks ago was the secondary tell. Finally, I think the final nail in the coffin was the break below 47,000, the break below the April low. All of a sudden, you now have a trend. Instead of being higher highs and higher lows, an uptrend, you have lower highs and lower lows, a downtrend, according to Charles Dow over 100 years ago. So that fits the characteristics of a valid downtrend. At that point, I'm telling my viewers and my, my clients for sure to, uh, you know, to be more defensive, to be cautious, to expect further downside potential. So while the suddenness of today's uh, sell-off in the last 24 hours is certainly uh, a surprise in some ways, uh, what is completely not surprising is the fact that you have a distribution after many clear signs of distribution along the way. Having said that, how do we use Fibonacci tracements to make sense of this? So first off, what we're going to do is look at the long-term uh, trends. So we're going to start at the low there in uh, March of 2020, whoops, over here. There we go, take the low from March of 2020 and take the um, uh, the high here in, uh, in in April of 2021. So now we're taking the entire time frame in uh, in mind. So what we can see is if you take the low of, uh, of March 2020, you take the high of April 2021, the question is, where do we find support and resistance between those two? And there's a couple key levels, 38.2%, 61.8% are really the key uh, levels to pay attention to. 38.2% is just below, below 42,000. Always look left on the chart and see where that lines up to key levels. You can see that it lines up pretty well with uh, the uh, the peak from January of uh, of 2021. That was that you know last major peak before the rally to where we uh, we ended the uptrend so far in April. So 41,000 to 42,000 certainly makes sense. Uh, that comprises the high from January, that comprises the low from February, which is a pullback level. So similar to what you saw here at 10,000, you tested it, you broke above it, you tested that same level from above, and you went higher. So that 41, 50, 41 to 42,000 really is a pretty significant level uh, right there. The next one down is 61.8%, which is just above 27,000. You can see that, uh, or 27,500, we'll say that, that that lines up not too far off of the lows, around 30,000, 29 to 30,000 here. So I think that next major, uh, that's another area of, uh, of support. I don't, you know, I think 
years ago when things like stocks traded on eights and you could have very particular support levels. A stock would hit 47 and one fourth. And that was an obvious level because there are only eight points between dollars that uh, that a stock could actually trade, right? It was every 12 and a half cents. Those days are gone and we're trading at sub penny. You know, the pips are, are really, really low. Uh, and so as a result, I, I, I tend to think not of support and resistance levels, but support and resistance ranges. So you'll hear in my description and the language I use, I use it's it, I don't think you can have a particular level and say is if it hit, breaks this level by one tick, the thing has changed. I think of it more in in uh, in ranges. I think the way that things trade and the decimals that we're using to uh, uh, to understand some of these assets, I think you need to have a lot of wiggle room in your uh, in your support and resistance level. So I'm having drawing levels, but I think of them more in ranges. So we've identified two sort of key ranges to pay attention to. All right, let's go back and try this again. We take a, a fresh chart, and now we're going to annotate a, uh, a little different one. This 10,000 level we talked about was really important, right? That's where we hit resistance uh, earlier in 2021, broke above it, and then retested them from, uh, from above. And that's where we're going to take the second Fibonacci retracement, take it from the September 2020 low, and then we're going to draw it to this point here in uh, January of 2021. You can see that the pullback here to 30,000 was a 38.2% retracement of the move from 10,000 to 42,000. We retraced 38.2% of the way. That's the first main Fibonacci level. So now we have additional support saying 30,000 is a pretty meaningful uh, price level, not just for the Fibonacci retracements, but also for um, the fact that uh, that, that it's, uh, it's price support as well. That's where we pulled back in January. The third Fibonacci level would actually take it from 10,000 up to that all-time high in April. Let's give it a bit of a, uh, a different uh, color scheme here as well, just so we don't confuse them. Now we're going the September 2020 low up to the high in April 2021. Now what levels are there between those? Let's extend that to where we're at now. And you can see that once again, we have another Fibonacci support level. This is actually a 61.8% retracement level of the overall move from 10,000 up to 64,000. We retraced 38.2% of the way. That was a level that made sense to me because that lined up with the February low. Once we broke that, you go to the next Fibonacci level, which is just above 30,000. So now we have what's called a confluence of support. The fact that Bitcoin hits support around 30,000 makes a ton of sense when you use Fibonacci retracements because you can see pretty much any time frame you use, that area, also the lows from January, all line up around that same sort of 30 to 31,000 uh, level. So now we get the three ways we can use Fibonacci retracements, taking the major highs and lows and looking at some of the levels and then focusing on how those levels line up with previous support and resistance. Now we can go back to this chart and, and while it's busy, it's now combining all of the lines that we just drew. We're taking the March 2020 low to the April 2021 high. We're taking the September 20 low around 10,000 uh, 10, to the uh, January high around 42,000. We're also taking the 10,000 low up to the ultimate high in the low 60,000s. We now have all of those lines drawn. And now what I like to do is draw some shaded areas to look for those confluence zones where you have multiple disciplines showing you support and resistance. You'll find that these line up with highs and lows. So if you take the January high uh, of this year, that lines up with the February low. That also is a Fibonacci support level. That's around 41 to 42,000. That's this shaded area in, uh, in blue. 30,000 or so, and just below there, lines up with a couple different Fibonacci retracements that we've taken. That's also where Bitcoin bottomed out in January. So that is a very important support level. You can see that's where uh, you know, we we hit bottom today, which makes a ton of sense from a technical perspective. So what now? Now we're in this range. Now we have a clear framework to try to make sense of Bitcoin. At some point, Bitcoin could certainly chop around in here for an extended period of time. But at some point, Bitcoin either breaks out of the blue range to the upside, at which point I would argue that's more of an all clear sign indicating more of a risk on scenario and the potential of Bitcoin to retrace at least up to 60,000 up to those uh, to those May highs. Or we fail at 30,000, at which point I think 27,200, which would be the Fibonacci level there uh, in orange, that would be the lower end of this pink shaded area. That should be the support on any further uh, distribution here. If you break that, I would argue that clears the way to go back all the way to 10,000. And while that seems like a crazy far way from now, which it is, Remember, uh, going from 60,000 to 30,000 seemed pretty crazy uh, about a month ago. We've done it. So, so things can happen. And, and I've always taught, always been taught, never confuse the bottom of the page with support, right? So just because something has come down a, while, a ways doesn't mean it can't continue uh, to go even lower. 
So what Fibonacci retracements allow you to do in this particular case is make sense of how to do it. Now, now we're drawing it today after we've had a huge sell-off. I would argue where I've been creating this chart is before today. You create this chart when you start to see the bearish divergences, when you start to see price go higher on weak, weaker momentum, when you start to see lower highs and you make a new swing low, that's when you draw the Fibonacci retracements to see if you do get a distribution, where might I expect support? That hopefully would have equipped you to understand why a bounce around 30,000 made a ton of sense from a number of different Fibonacci uh, uh, analytics that we did. Now it also shows you how this sort of 27 to 30,000 range, 31,000 maybe makes sense. That's the pink shaded area. Area here, as long as that holds, I think the bottom overall is uh, is uh, is is in. If you break twenty seven thousand two hundred, that's the lower end of that. I would argue that's the last line in the sand and clears the way to a much deeper move, potentially down to uh, all the way down to ten thousand uh, or so. On the other side of it, as we rally today, as we try to make sense of it, and again, we can certainly stay between these two shaded areas for an extended period of time, but I think a break above that blue shaded area would indicate more of a risk on posturing. That would indicate enough buying power entering back in that the distribution is done. That would show some stability. That would show that people are willing to pay more for Bitcoin again, and ideally a higher low somewhere in this range would, uh, would, would sort of give extra validity to that potential breakout. And if you break above that, blue shaded area, I could certainly see the argument for return to the previous highs, at least around 60,000, which would be the high from earlier in May. So that is the use of Fibonacci retracements, along with some other things to understand the chart of Bitcoin. All right, so that's how we're looking at Bitcoin. And again, this is really a, 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 uh, a, a brief discussion on how to use Fibonacci retracements. Anytime you've had a significant rise and you start to see some short-term weakness, that's when Fibonacci retracements uh, can come in handy because what it does is it helps you identify where you might expect some reasonable pullbacks, right? What if this uh, asset, what if this chart has a reasonable pullback relative to other reasonable pullbacks going back through financial history? 38.2%, the first Fibonacci level tends to be a pretty good way to uh, to uh, to measure that. So those are the key levels I'm watching, and I hope that this helps you understand how to use Fibonacci retracements on a couple different time frames to help make sense of a, uh, a sudden move to the downside. If this sort of thinking about uh, technical analysis, about investor behavior, about fear and greed, and how they manifest themselves into stock prices and asset prices, and how to use charts to minimize your own behavioral biases and maximize your returns by helping you manage behavioral biases of your own, I hope you will hit subscribe and join me along this journey of, uh, of mindful investing and behavioral investing. Give this video a like if you appreciated it. We would certainly appreciate it right back. Finally, put a comment below the video. What do you think about this analysis of Bitcoin? Do you think the pink shaded area around 30,000 holds uh, or not? Do you think the blue shaded area potential resistance holds or do you think Bitcoin is going to return to its previous highs? Let me know what you think in the comments below. From everyone here at Market Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Be well, stay safe, trade well, and I'll talk to you soon.